It only makes sense if I really love my neighbor, if I really love people, to share it, to tell somebody else how to do it. I figured out one plus one is two. I'm going to help you figure out one plus one is two. I'm not going to watch my neighbor put six and then just be like, oh, that's not my problem. Welcome back, viewer, to another Iron Sharp Design video where we got nothing but superb truth to help you and Barbara stay sharp out there. Today's topic is another testimony that I want to give. Today's topic is why iron sharpens iron. So I'm pretty much going to go into detail on how I started all this off, how God just, you know, was using me and how it's continuing to use me, the future of the channel, and, you know, just a lot of things and stuff I've been dealing with. I was somebody who grew up you know, thinking that they were a Christian, you know, thinking I'm, yeah, I'm a good person, you know, I love God and all these things, but I was definitely in that lukewarm category. I would definitely say that about myself. And I went through my whole life pretty much all the way up until like my uh, early 20s before I really started to take God seriously. Because I don't really consider myself religious, I just feel like I take God seriously. I actually fear God, I want to love Him, keep His commandments, I want to do right by Him. So again, all the way back to Japan, Japan was a wonderful time in my life. So, so I was on deployment about three years ago in the middle of the ocean and it took a long time for me to really realize how God uses people. So a lot of times, you know, we can be thinking, <laughs> We can be thinking, <laughs> that don't even make sense. We can think that we know where we're going in life. We can think, you know, hey, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm all good. I got my eggs in the basket. I got my ducks in a row. But then God is like, nope, you lost, son. No, daughter, that's not what I want you to do. So he'll send people in our life to, you know, help us get on track. God sent somebody in my life to help get me on the right track. And uh, I consider this dude like a brother pretty much. Uh, John, yeah, you know who you are. I started actually reading the Bible. That's literally when it, everything changed in my life, when I actually started reading the Bible. I started reading it, I picked it up, and I started trying to apply it to my life. I would read scriptures, and I'm like, okay, I hear people say X, Y, and Z, but all right, well, is that really in there? Let me go and actually try to find it for myself. Because there's a lot of stuff that people just, you know, say and a lot of things that you may hear your pastor or Google, your friend, you know, mom, dad, anybody could have told you something. But until you really go in there and see it for yourself, you're not going to really know that it's there or if it's true or if they're taken out of context. So um, I decided to go in there myself. I started reading the Bible for myself. I started really seeing just how true it is. And I'm telling you. Anybody that watched this channel, you know I love me some Jesus. Jesus is so deep. He's so he's so deep. He says stuff that's literally profound. It blows my mind. I can still go back and read certain scriptures or stuff that I haven't even um, really paid attention to now. And I'm just like, yo, this some y'all didn't hear that. It went over somebody's head. I gotta read it again. And I'll go back and read it. And I'm just, you know, getting really into, you know, hearing stuff that Christ is talking about, hearing what God is saying the apostles, you know, all these other people that God used. And I was like, yo, I, this stuff is legit right here. But once I started really learning certain things, once I started listening to like uh, different sermons, uh, hearing actual, you know, men of God preach truth, preach holiness, you know, talk about the word of God and not water it down to make me feel good. Once I started really reading this stuff, I said, hold on, man, like, this is crazy. Like, the standard, what the world says Christians are, is kind of like right here. The standard of God and what he really wants, it's, you can't, it's, there's, look at the gap. You can't even, you don't even know how high my hand is. It's a really big gap. So I started realizing, yo, we're we not gonna make it. I'm reading this stuff, I'm reading the Bible, and I'm like, yo, we're not living up to what we're supposed to be doing. So I said, this is insane, like nobody told me this. But then I can't really blame it on nobody else. Also at the same time, I didn't go out there and you know, read this. God's gonna be like, you had the truth, you had the knowledge, you know, you had opportunity after opportunity, there's no excuse, is what the Bible said. So, you know, we, we can't go our whole life living by carelessly, you know, oh yeah, I'm with God, I love Jesus, Jesus' life matters, you know, all this stuff, but we're not really following it. Seeing how true it is, doing my own research, I didn't just listen to what people told me, did my own research, um, the Holy Spirit is there with me, it's giving me conviction, it's giving me truth, it's, you know, guiding me and everything. I said, oh man, I, I gotta help somebody else out. I have to help out my neighbor. So I said, you know what, I, I need to figure out a way to do it. And I was kind of in one of those moments where, you know, when people really just finally get saved and, you know, they find Jesus and now they want to tell the whole world and stuff like that. 
That was pretty much me. So I was like, well, you know, what's a good effective way to do it? Seeing how I'm in the military and I'm in Japan, I can't really just go on a corner street, you know, get a sign, start, you know, talking to a microphone, something like that, because you know, that <laughs> it's not America, it don't work like that. I definitely would be in jail. I felt like God was leading me to make a channel. Um, just make, you know, videos. And I was like, well, I start a YouTube channel. I'll do something like that. But then I was like, what should we call it? So I'm, I'm really trying to figure out, you know, the name of it and all these things. And then I ran across that scripture, Proverbs 27 and 17. Iron sharpens iron. A man sharpens the continents of his friend. And I was like, yo, this is... This, this, this is it right here. Oh, this is it right here. I like this. And um, I had only heard that scripture a few times in my whole life before it really like spoke to me. And my friend, the one that, you know, kind of helped me uh, get close to God and start actually taking God seriously, he was the one that suggested it. He was like, iron sharp as iron. And I was like, you know what? That's it. Ding, ding, ding. Survey says that's the number one answer. So that's what I went with. Iron sharp as iron. And... I just started, you know, trying to put together videos and things like that to help you, the viewers, stay sharp out there. That's why I say it in every video, you know, you getting your ducks in a row, help your neighbor get their ducks in a row. You know, once we get ourselves together, we have to help each other out. Um, if there's stuff I know, I know stuff about the kingdom, I know things we're supposed to be doing, I know a standard, you know, I'm figuring out some of these keys to success, to life, to what Christ wants us to do, then it only makes sense if I really love my neighbor, if I really love people, to share it, to tell somebody else how to do it. I figured out one plus one is two, I'm gonna help you figure out one plus one is two. I'm not gonna watch my neighbor put six and then just be like, oh, that's not my problem. Cause you're gonna be judged for everything you do and everything you didn't do. If God watching you, you going around, you not being a good Samaritan, you watching your neighbor struggle when you could help them, then it's, you know, that's, you're gonna have to answer for that. And looking back now on just how much the channel has, you know, kind of grown, uh, I'm pretty shocked sometimes. Uh, I watched like my very, very first videos all the way back uh, in 2017, and boy, <laughs> it's a little rough to get through. Um, not saying I didn't know what I was talking about. I could just tell, if you watch it, you can see that you know, I'm a novice at that point. Uh, so I've grown so much just doing this channel preparing to put videos together. It takes me about like a good, the videos that I kind of do now that I've been doing for like the past year, the way they're set up, it takes me about like a good four or five hours to do one video to, you know, gather the scriptures I want to do. Uh, you know, I hear God speak certain scriptures to me. Uh, I may hear or see certain scriptures throughout the week or throughout the year. And I'll just write stuff down. I'm like, okay, I can use this for this video. I can use this for this video. Oh, that was really good. And I'll just, you know, have stuff in my notes. And then when it's time for me to do a video, I already have stuff planned out. I already have the scriptures I want to use for it. So we go in, we do all of that. We do the recorded stuff like this. Then we edit everything. And um, seeing how I used to do it when I first started off, man, we came a long way. And I just give guys so much glory for it just you know molding me and transforming me and helping me grow along the way with that part being said viewer if you feel like god is telling you to do something in your life if you feel like he's speaking to you he's trying to show you something wants you to get to somewhere then don't listen to what other people tell you uh don't don't get caught up with you know you can't do it and you, you'll never be able to do it you're nobody and stuff like that because if god is calling you to do something it may start off a little rocky or it may not look you know super blossomed or you know something amazing when they first start but that's because the picture is still being painted it's going to take time once you continue to do it you show god that you're going to be faithful in it because there's a lot of times where i would do the channel and i said you know what i'm not getting no views uh i'm gonna just stop you know i'm gonna just stop doing it because um can i be honest with you viewer every now and then god really has to humble me about this channel because I feel like we put a lot of time and effort into it. When I say we, a lot of times talk about me and Jesus. We put a lot of time and effort into it. And we do a lot of creative stuff. And I think a lot of stuff is neat the way we do it. Our, you know, not stage presence, like, you know, I'm an actor or anything. Because I never, I ain't trying to be an actor. I don't, I don't want none of that. But, you know, the way we deliver the message, I think it's, I think it's you know, unique or creative or whatever the case may be. Um, but it's like, dang, dude, just six views, Jesus? <sighs> All right. And then, you know, I'll get into this little, this little, you know, pity party mode where I don't want to make a video. I'll be like, man, I'm just, well, maybe I wouldn't, maybe God wasn't speaking to me. Maybe I'm not supposed to make a channel because ain't nobody watching. And God had to reveal to me and he had to show me, and I, I still struggle with this every now and then, that it's not about the views. 
Um, it's more about the content itself. If I, I'm getting to the point where I'm really realizing it and not just saying it, because I, I used to say this back when I first started, but it, one, if I had to be honest with myself, it wasn't really in there. Like I really, really, truly meant it. I'm still, still shaking a little bit now, but I'm getting to the point where I fully am saying that, okay, if I make a video, if me and God spend time making a video, regardless of how long it takes, if we put it up and it gets one view, and that's the only view it gets for 10, 20, 30, however many years, as long as that one viewer, whoever that viewer is, saw it and they applied something, they, they took something from it and they changed their life and they're doing stuff to give God glory, then that's it. That's that's all that matters. But when I first started the channel, I dealt with that a lot. It wasn't getting any views. And even now, I still don't get like, you know, I'm not getting no thousands or nothing like that. Of course, at the same time, I gotta remember, hey man, this ain't gonna be trending. Nah, the stuff we talking about, that's not gonna be trending. We telling people you can't do X, Y, and Z. God has a standard. Everybody's not accepted. You know, you gotta change. Yes, he loves you, but you know, you, you gotta get rid of that sin stuff. You gotta take that out. So I understand, okay, the world, this isn't gonna be trending in the world because you know, I'm not a worldly person um, and I'm not compromising. So I understand that. Whenever you're doing something for God, you have to be humble. As soon as you get pride and you start thinking, you know, it's about you. It's not about what you're doing for God, but it's about what you're doing and how good and talented you are. If you start relying on your works, then that's where you're gonna start to fall. So um, I had to, you know, learn stuff like that the hard way, but uh, I still do love doing this channel. I still love making content and things like that. I just really enjoy being creative with God. And then, you know, everything that um, we've been doing on this channel, um, not saying I'm the only one that's been doing it because I give God all the glory, of course, but you know, it's, it's just us. It's just me, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. That's it. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> all the shirts that I've been wearing in the Logo Serama series and this uh, Testimony series, like, you know, as such, these are shirts that I made about a, about a year ago. I started coming up with, a, you know, a lot of ideas and things like that. And uh, I don't really advertise this one too much because I started thinking that, um, I believe it's the first and second commandment that talks about a graven image. And I was like, well, mm, this might be borderline graven image. You know, don't make it. Cause you know, it's Jesus, but we don't really know what Jesus like. I, I don't know, it's just a silhouette. But it's like one of the first little uh, ideas or like logos that I came up with, Evolution is Real. And I thought it was pretty cool. Then, you know, we started doing all the other stuff. Uh, Rapture ready, like a good savior, Jesus Christ. Is there. I really love that one. I, I, <laughs> I don't know if anybody's still watching this, but I really enjoy how God uh, uses uses me to do creative things for him. Because like I said, I love being creative for God. If God has, he's putting his stamp on it, he's putting his signature on it, I want to be all over it. So certain things, you know, the way he uses my, you know, my ideas and the way my brain works is I'll see different things and you know, I just try to, I won't say incorporate God in it, but I look at it, I'm like, how can I use that to give God glory? And you know, evolution is talked about a lot in school. That's, you know, a lot of people grow up, you know, they try to force feed you that in science and biology and chemistry and all that stuff. Evolution is real, evolution is real. Look how you used to be a monkey. This came from this, oh, big explosion, big bang theory, all lies, all lies, all lies. So I'm like, man, how can I turn what the enemy tried to use and put it back in God's favor. I'm like, evolution is real. You know, we started off with man, then we got the sin, and we met Christ, came across. I was like, hey, life bulbs. You know, it, it was good stuff. Um, and I just had little epiphanies like that with a lot of different ideas. I remember I was watching one of my videos, and in the midst of a video, I had never um, like rehearsed this or thought about it before, but literally in the middle of a video, the very first time I said, like a good savior, Jesus Christ is there. I had said it in a lesson not learned is a situation repeated. So in that video, I had, that was the very first time I said that phrase, like a good savior, Jesus Christ is there. And I was like, yo, that's like their State Farm commercial, like a good neighbor, State Farm, gift of eternal life. I was like, yo, light bulbs, that's, 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 that's good right there. Um, and it's just, you know, little things like that that I just find and I'm just like, yo, that's popping. And I remember like three, four years ago, everybody was talking about Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter. And then I think the other video I had in my straight where it said, Jesus Life Matter. I was like, yo, like, man, over somebody head, they missed it. Um, I do have another shirt idea. I know I'm just kind of rambling at this point, but uh, I just like talking about God. Um, but I do have another idea of a shirt I want to do. So, you know, everybody knows the little Nike check symbol is, you know, really 
iconic and you see it, just do it, you know, all that stuff. I wanted to do a shirt where it says, just do it, but it says, just let God do it. And we got a Nike check, but then it's another one and it looked like a cross. Hey, see, y'all wasn't ready for that one. But that was still in the works. I got to put it on, you know, try to design it and come up with it. Uh, I did, when I very first started making these shirts and things like that, and of course, you know, I always got the bow tie on the sleeve. Um, I wanted to actually give these shirts away to, you know, the people that actually watch these videos. The 20, 30 people that actually watch the video the day I put it up, those consecutive people, you know who you are. Um, I One, I really do appreciate that because, you know, we can say that we try to be humble, but everybody kind of likes to be liked. You know, if anybody says they have zero desire to be liked or, you know, feel appreciated, they're lying to you. Not saying I crave it to where it's, you know, a form of idolatry or it's, you know, against God, but if you put time and effort in something, you want to feel appreciated. That's just a normal thing. I'm like, you know, I'm not saying get carried away. I need hand claps. I need people to, you know, love me and, you know, bow down and say I'm the greatest ever, nothing like that. But you like to see your stuff appreciated. Well, the people that actually watch these videos, when I first started making these shirts, I was like, you know, I'm gonna start giving them away. Um, I'm not gonna try to tell nobody, hey, uh, the first 10,000 people that like it and share it and add me on Instagram and Facebook. No, don't do all of that. If you wanna subscribe to the channel, you can subscribe to the channel. You know what the button do. If you wanna like it, you can like it. I ain't gotta tell you to like the video. Um, but the people that actually watch it, I was gonna give these um, these shirts away, but then you see my very first testimony video, you know, I'm not in the best situation with the money, the way my bank account is set up right now, so it's gonna have to wait until the future. But um, eventually I do plan on giving some shirts away for free. I'm not gonna ask nobody to do nothing. It'll just be one of the videos I do. I'm like, hey, put your information in the comments section or whatever, and I'll send it to you. I kind of got off topic with that last stuff about the t-shirts and everything, but going back to like the logos and things like that, um, especially this last, um, the last time I restarted the channel up, I wanted to do things a little different. I wanted to have more than just the Iron Sharpers Iron video, you know, we're talking about the main topic and things like that. I wanted, you know, find more ways to give God glory. Something that I had just recently learned about was Logos and Rhema. Like I had just recently learned about that stuff like a few months ago. So I'm like, damn, Logos and Rhema, I never, you know, ever heard of that. So that was something that was fresh and new to me. So I was like, you know what, let me bring this to the view. You know, Iron Sharp Design, you know, get the logo Serena so you can have it too. Uh, and, and in the midst of that logo Serena, I said, you know, I want to come up with a different, kind of like a different logo. So as you can see the transition um, of the little icon we use, we used to use the bow tie, which I love bow ties. Um, and then we used to use the, this to me, it's like a silhouette of me standing in front of a cross. And I thought that was the loudest thing ever. We made that, boy, you couldn't tell me nothing. I was like, hey, we legit, Jesus. We got a logo. We finna start a company. We in there. Um, and then Logo Serena came along, and I was like, I need to tweak this a little bit. And then, I, you know, I'm in, I'm in the lab, you know, me and Jesus working on it. And, you know, we got Logo Serena. So I'm thinking of God's word. I'm thinking of the Bible. So I'm like, Logos, okay, we got the Bible. And then I got Rhema. Rhema is supposed to be the spoken word. So I was like, let me get an audio sound wave, but put it in the shape of a cross. And boy, I tell you, when we did that, I just, I was about to do a backflip in my house. Oh boy, I was about to do a backflip. Because so I was like, this is live. Jesus, look at this. I'm standing in front of it. We out on the bow tie. I was like, this is legit. I'm free for the, free for the blow up, Jesus. But uh, it's not about blowing up. Um, it's just, you know, really being grateful. And, you know, I just really position myself to be used by God. So if you were, God can be trying to, you know, use you to do something for him, for his kingdom. You gotta figure out what that is. Cause I know I'm not the only person God just wants to use. He wants to use all of us. But the thing is, we gotta position ourselves to be used by him. And yeah, we're gonna mess up, I mess up. We all gonna fall for trap cards and okie doke. You can't find a single person in the Bible that didn't fall for a trap card and okie doke, except for Jesus. Cause you know, Jesus, he's that standard. Everybody else, they fell for okie doke, but God still used him to do wonderful things. Great, mighty, powerful things. So he wants to use you, viewer, to do something for him. So um, figure out what your iron sharp as iron is. Figure out what it is that God wants you to do to help strengthen your brethren, strengthen your neighbor, help out that dude at Taco Bell, help out the girl at Starbucks, help out the man in Hawaii, everybody. Figure out a way for you to help out your neighbor. Figure out a way to get your iron sharpened iron.
That being said, you can't forget to repent because you don't want to go to hell and take that non-refundable hell. Don't worry about what the world is trying to tell you to do because they don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. And as always, we're too blessed to be stressed. Stay blessed by the best. Don't forget to pray for the rest of you. And until next time. We spent five hours on there. Jesus, we got six views. Uh, hot dogs and chips.